Hi everybody, today um, we have a slightly different subject, it's nothing to do with motorbikes today, today it's to do with telescopes. So I've um, had a, a Mead ETX telescope for many years, it was this, I had a 105, it was this tube that used to fit inside this mount and anyone who's into telescopes knows that sooner or later the original gearboxes in these um, in these go-to mounts start to fail and it was beyond repair so what I ended up doing long story short I ended up I wanted to change the mount but it worked out more cost effective to buy the new mount with a tube so I bought myself the um, the LX65 with a um, with a six inch Maxitoff tube and it has a second mount on the left hand side now there's a weight limit that you can put onto here and I think it's 3.2 kilos and lucky enough for me the 105 tube let's have a little way up because it's not going to be that straightforward the tube on its own comes to 2.58 now I've ordered a dovetail and the problem with that, just the dovetail, is that if you mount this telescope straight onto the dovetail, it, um, it will end up sitting on its side, which isn't ideal. Now, there are various ways around it. You can, um, you can buy a different eyepiece to correct that on the side. Or, what I'm going to do is I've bought myself a piece of um, aluminium, 6mm aluminium, which will enable me, my plan... The dovetail is not here at the moment is to mount the dovetail on the side and that create a nice little platform because on the on the early on the early ones you've got actually two mounting holes underneath so that will enable me to mount the scope something like this and then i can mount the dovetail on the side this is the wrong way around it needs to go the other way around which will then enable me to mount it side on inside the stand. Now, the problem with that is that that's quite a hefty piece of aluminium. Because if I weigh this piece of aluminium, I have to bear in mind the total weight. So let's pop that on first. The total weight has to come in under 3.2. Now I can lose the red dot finder and the finder scope on this telescope, which will save some weight because I have one obviously on this new telescope. But still, I will, you know, wanting to mount cameras and things like that. So let's see what this comes into. It comes to, and it comes to, right, so the piece of aluminium is already over, see, 3.5. So what I'm now going to do, and that's not taking into account that there's a dovetail to be bolted onto that as well, is to, um, right, so on the back of this I've drawn it up. I only actually need this small section, so that's less than half of this piece of aluminium. So this aluminium weighs 678, so if I come in at... 300 that should do it so i'm going to get on with that and cut this out and i'll show you where i get to at that point okay after a lot of um hacksawing and clamping i managed to cut out of this this section of aluminium now that's um, um four inches wide and two inches high which would be perfect to bolt the dovetail onto here which will then slot it into the mount in that direction and the scope will sit on here with two screw holes through here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to clamp the belt sander to the bench and clamp a piece of wood just standing off the belt sander like this which will enable me to smooth and round the edges all the way around and make it super smooth which I do now and I'll show you when that's done. 
but don't you just love aluminium? So anyway, that wasn't too difficult. So what I did, I fired up the belt sander, as you can see there, and get that piece of wood just to stand it off, enables you to run the aluminium up against it, to keep it square. And you might be able to see, I've just rounded over the edge. As it's spinning, you, you can just round it over like this, smooth up the edges, gives you a nice clean edge um, along the side, along the top, and then you can run a, um, a little palm sander after to um, take all the burrs off. And that's nice and smooth. I'm gonna give it a little scotch bright, and I'm gonna acid etch prime this and spray it in satin black so it'll match the dovetail. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to drill the holes first because I need to find, as you know, when you put the telescope into the mount, it needs to be balanced. So I'm imagining that the, the telescope will be mounted to the back of this, that way around, to the back of this bracket, but I won't know for sure until the bracket arrives. So I'm just going to acid etch prime it, clean it up, acid etch prime it, spray it black, and I'll show you that when it's done. Okay, so uh, before I spray it up, I just thought I'll have a little way up to see where we are. So the limit, the limit, so that did come down quite a bit, 326. That's going to be close. Um, and let me just pop the scope on and see what I end up with. Oh, goodness me. All right, so that's um, 3.179, and the absolute limit is 3.2. So that is under, but I don't have an eyepiece or a web camera or anything in. However, I probably can offset that because this um, red dot finder is a metal, the metal kind, and that weighs quite a bit. And this um, finder scope here, so that would probably take care of that. If I find, ooh, if I find it's too close, which I think we will be fine, but if I find it's too close, I will probably be able to, because when you look at this, um, that's been mounted. My calculation says that that will be mounted at the back of this plate. So there is quite a large section at the front that could come out at some point if it doesn't work. Um, or drill a huge hole in it to reduce the weight. And as I'm not sure how critical it is, but it says 3.2, so that's what I'll go with, as long as I'm under that. Anyway, I'm gonna spray it up. Probably a bit too soon to be doing that, but I'm gonna do it anyway, because it's wet outside and I'm waiting on the dovetail. Anyway, I'll show you that done. Okay, so the plans are changing all the time. So I did decide to drill the holes, and here it is fitted. So as you can see, that bolts onto the bottom and yeah, it gives plenty of space on the right. So eventually when that dovetail, I'm kind of stuck in the middle of what I can do now because the dovetail is still not here. But as you can see, when the dovetail is then fitted, that will then slot into that fitting. And find the balance. I did mount it simply because I had a quick look and the balance point of this telescope will be quite forward so it's very difficult to show but if I just pop a pen under there for now you'll see that the balance point is more or less at the front of that bracket. If you see here it's, it's more or less in this sort of area do you see? So what that will mean is that the um, that will mean it be somewhere here. So with the dovetail fitted to this, the dovetail I think is exactly the same width of this, so it would be at the front edge, which isn't a problem really, although you can shimmy it along, but I'll put it in the middle. But what I will have to do is what I notice on the dovetails is they don't have a stop on the end. So when that goes on, I will mount a through bolt through the dovetail and this bracket. So when it's sitting on here, if it was to come loose, see on this side, if this was to slide off its dovetail, it would, it would be stopped here. It, it can't fall to the floor because whenever it's in that down position, it's over this base. But on the other side, it'll be straight down to the floor. So if I put in a little stop bolt, 
it won't be able to slide past. So I will do that. So yeah, so the, uh, the bracket will mount here and it'll probably be balanced somewhere by the time you stick an eyepiece in, somewhere around there. So that should be about perfect. Anyway, I'll show you that when it's done. All right, so there's the first coat of um, Acid Etch Primer. Um, I've just got it sitting on the block. So we'll do that in satin black in the end so it matches everything. That looks rather nice. So I'll, um, I'll show you that when it's had the next coat of so black in a bit. Okay, there it is, sprayed up satin black. Just drying there. I'm quite pleased with that. That looks almost a, a factory finish um, and a lot cheaper. That whole block of aluminium, I've got a piece left, so another bracket is possible for something else. I think it was six pound, some paint. I've always got paint around, so six pounds so far. And the dovetail, I think was also 5.79 or six pound. So the whole thing, you know, 12 pounds. So um, yeah, I'll, um, I'll have to pause for now, but uh, I won't post the video anyway until it's all finished. So I'm just waiting for the dovetail to arrive, which I will um, bolt through and probably use a, um, a black um, adhesive mastic to bed it in as well. So there's no movement from the dovetail to the bracket at all. Okay, so see you in a bit. All right, so the dovetail finally arrived. So here it is. Um, the finish is very good. It's um, it's going to go very well with the with the um, bracket I made. Um, while I was waiting for that to arrive, with that off cut of um, with the off cut of aluminium, I decided to try, try and um, make a, another bracket. You can see it's a, a similar um, a similar design, but it's um, slightly offset and a lot lighter. But I won't be using it, I just thought to kill some time I'll have a go. It's not exactly precise, there's a few errors in there when I was drilling the hole, you might be able to see. Anyway, that's there. So the bracket, um, the dovetail will um, slide into here. And, um, and I will bolt it to the bracket I've made. Now I've noticed on the dovetail there's four holes and two of the holes are threaded. So if I can, if I can manage to line those up, I'll probably use the threaded bolt so I can come at it from the other side. And we'll see how easy that is to do. If not, um, it'll be a uh, nut and bolt job. Anyway, I'll, um, I'll get that done now. Right, so there it is. So that's it, bolted on. Um, well, that needs balancing anyway. Anyway, so bolted on, there's the platform. There's a dovetail. And as I was mentioning early on in the video, um, I'm going to just check where the balancing point is because I'm going to need to put some kind of stop on. Because as you can see, if this was to come loose, this just slides straight out. So we'll see. I'm going to mount the telescope onto here, put it in, balance it and see where we are at that point. So there it is mounted. Um, that's pretty much balanced where it is. And as you can see, I've got plenty, I've got plenty out sticking out the back. So I'm going to now drill a, a bolt hole through the whole thing here, and stick a domed nut on the end. So if this was to slide forward, um, it would hit a stop here. And I think that's probably a wise thing to do. So I'll do that now, and then I'll show you that done. Well, there it is. Well, I had to take the uh, red dot finder off. There it is mounted. Re with the red dot finder off, it comes in at um, 3.199, which is bang on the money. But you bear in mind that this still has the lens cap on. So um, with that uh, lens cap on this model, it's a aluminium lens cap, it's quite heavy. So if I was to unscrew that lens cap, um, and weigh the telescope. Let's have a look what we're coming at. Here we go. 3.7974. There we go. So that's under. So I'll pop it on the on the mount and we'll see what it looks like. Well, there it is done. All on, all mounted. Obviously needs lining up and uh, all the rest of it. But there's the mount. 
there's the platform there's a little stop that might one day save it dropping out I'm not sure if I'm going to need one on the other side as well um, because uh, when you're looking up at sort of 45 50 degrees or more um, you know it will slide backwards but I'm sure if you've got it clamped uh, on tight enough um, it should be all right but if there's room to put one it won't do any harm um, so yeah what do you think <laughs>